You know, I'm thankful for the trials that I've had because from it all, I've been blessed with so much. The Savior is my best friend. And I, I wouldn't be able to have this friendship with him if I hadn't had the experiences I had. When I was four years old, I was molested by my uncle. It was a one-time thing and it still affects me today. I didn't know how much it would until over time. Growing up, uh, my dad worked a lot. I barely ever saw him. My family moved around quite a bit, and I had to say goodbye to a lot of my childhood friends. Um, it, it seemed like it was constant uh, all the time I was, I was saying goodbye. When I came to high school, I started to see that a lot of the guys were really interested in girls, and they were really interested in what they had to offer them and being friends with them, and I, I didn't. I was thinking to myself, maybe I'm just a late bloomer, don't really know what's going on. And uh, when I was in high school, I started to recognize that I felt very, very strong attraction to my male friends. And uh, it wasn't necessarily sexual, but there was a lot, there was definitely some traction there that I didn't know what to think. I didn't know how, how to process it. And that was the first time that I recognized I had same-sex attraction. I was still in denial, but I, I, knew, I knew then that that's what was going on. But I lived the life I could. I went to seminary, I, you know, Li went through, lived uh, through the gospel, um, kept the commandments. You know, I, I wanted to live the life that I wanted to live, and that was the life that my Heavenly Father wanted me to live. And without the atonement, without the power of His gospel, I wouldn't have been able to get through all that. He was there with me every step of the way. It was so difficult for me to look at that abuse when I was a four-year-old kid, I liked what happened. I thought it was a fun game that we could play, you know, and that was a, and for me to process that and to feel the shame around that, thinking that I was broken somehow because I wanted something that was evil. I wanted something that was wicked. And uh, I didn't know how to handle that. So I shut down and it served me for a little bit. Uh, I tried to convince myself the abuse was a nightmare. Uh, didn't try to just, live whatever life I could, uh, make the friends I could, uh, did, you know, just, I played my best hand with the cards I, I was dealt with, and I felt that I was dealt with a good life. When I turned 19, I put in my mission papers, and I got called to the Washington Kennewick Mission, and I had a great mission experience. When I, one of my mission is like all these needs that I had were suddenly being met. I had this community of brothers that I, you know, was able to bond with, that had these healthy relationships, healthy friendships with LDS men. Uh, that was a pretty uncommon for me. And uh, about halfway through my mission, I started recognizing those feelings again, recognizing the feelings of attraction. And I knew that I had, it was something I had to look at. And there was no more denial. I knew it was something I had to look at. And so I made a promise to my only father that after mission, I would go to go see a counselor. I would go and look at my, and, and talk about my child abuse and talk about my attraction to men. Came back from a mission. And I remember one time when my family was out of the house, I, I got the phone number for LDS Family Services. I called them and I said, I want to speak with the counselor because I need to look at my child abuse and I need to talk about my, talk about my same-sex attraction. Um, my counselor was very compassionate, very understanding. He didn't really feel like I had SSA and he's like, I don't really know if this is really your issue. I met with him for about a year and um, it was a great experience. Uh, at the end, he's like, you know what, I think you're done. I think we're done here. You know, you're, you're in a really good place. But I, you know, I, I still had so many questions. It's like, why was friendship so important to me? 
You know, why was it so difficult for me to make this connection to men? Why, you know, why, why was this the case? Why do I feel so um, not masculine? Because the thing was, after I left my mission, it, I mean, it wasn't just a mantle that was removed from me. I, I was expecting that. But I was not expecting how important it was for me to have brothers in the gospel. Not men that you saw at Elders Quorum once a week and never talked to during the week. I'm talking about true brothers in the gospel that are there for you, that support you, that love you. So I turned to the internet for answers and I found this blog called The Art of Manliness. It was just a men's interest blog. It talked about different things and there was an article called The History of Male Friendships and it completely resonated with me because I, I saw this, this article, I saw the, the history of, of male friends and I was just kind of like, everything I've wanted, it's not necessarily gay, is it? It's not necessarily even related to my sexuality. Me wanting to connect with other men is a very normal and healthy thing. And I realized this is a good thing. This is what my savior would want for me. And so I, I went on the website, and at this point, I'm a pretty peaceful place with my SSA. I knew I had it. I knew I wasn't in denial anymore, and I was just kind of like, it is what it is. You know, I don't know what I don't know what the next step is. To, uh, the next step is to take. I, I was more concerned actually with my child abuse. Um, well, I made two friends on the online art of manliness community, and I just felt very connected to them. And one of them worked in the industry I want. It worked in the industry that I want to work in and you know lived in Southern California, married in the temple, had a, you know a couple kids and I, and I was just like you know what this is someone I could find mentorship from and the spirit told me you have to go visit him. We talked a lot, found out we had a lot of similarities. Um, you know I felt like I was meeting not meeting a new friend but meeting an old friend. He looked at me and he, he said why did you see a counselor? The spirit was pretty strong and, and said that you need, I need to tell him about my child abuse. I need to tell him about my, about my SSA. And uh, I remember he sort of breathed in a little bit deeply and he said, I knew it. He reached over and he put his hand on my shoulder and he said, I get it. And when he said that, the spirit hit me like a brick wall. The support that I was looking for, that was on my mission, that brotherhood that I was trying to find, suddenly I found it again. And not only that, but, you know, when he said, when I told him about the fact that I was dealing with homosexual feelings, he just looked at me and he says, well, it takes one to know one. I never felt so close to my Father in Heaven than in that time in my life. Not on my mission, not on any other experience. But when He reached out to me and expressed understanding, it wasn't just love from a man that I just met that I trusted that I was feeling love from, I felt a lot of love from my Heavenly Father. That He loved me personally. That I was, that, that I was His son. And that He cared deeply about me. And ever since that point, my life has changed. I couldn't have the testimony of the atonement that I have without the experience of having same-sex attraction or that child abuse. I don't know what my life is going to be like. I don't know if I'll be married to a daughter of God in the temple someday. I hope so. That's what my goal is. But even if the life I end up living is a single life and, devo and devoted to my Father in Heaven, and thereby living a celibate single life. I would find so much joy and happiness in that. I couldn't ask for more supportive parents or siblings when I've told them about my 
my journey with SSA. And to have that has been an amazing blessing in my life that is well worth whatever trial that I had to face. Even in endurance, I find so much joy. And that quality of joy is worth every heartache and every you know, pain that we experience, every wound that we have to go through. And that's how my Heavenly Father has blessed me in my life, is He just has given me so much. And uh, I would never want to give that up.